actress Lisa Loring, who played Wednesday Adams at the age of six, has just passed away at the age of 64. She died in Burbank, California, January 28, 2023, four days after experiencing a massive stroke. Join us as we take a look back at Lisa Loring's life and career. Following her death, actor John Astin remains the last surviving cast member of the original Adams Family TV series. So we'll pay our respects to the other cast members who are no longer with us. Facts First presents Lisa Loring's cause of death is utterly tragic. She struggled to find roles after the Adams Family. Loring's parents both served in the U.S. Army. She was born Lisa Ann DeCensis in the Marshall Islands on February 16, 1958. Not long after she was born, her parents separated and divorced. She grew up with her mother, first in Hawaii, but later in Los Angeles. At age three, Loring began modeling. In 1964, she appeared in an episode of Dr. Kildare, beginning her career as a child actress. That same year, she was cast as Wednesday Adams on The Adams Family. She remained in that role throughout the series' two-season run from 1964 to 66. While that role ultimately proved to be the one she was best known and remembered for, Loring continued her acting career for the next two decades. Still, she suffered a fate not unfamiliar to former child actors and was never able to quite find the same level of success that she enjoyed on The Addams Family. After The Addams Family was canceled, Loring joined the cast of the short-lived ABC sitcom The Pruitts of Southampton. Then, from 1980 to 1983, she played Cricket Montgomery on CBS's long-running soap opera As the World Turns. Later on in her acting career, Loring appeared in three low-budget B-rate slasher flicks, 1987's Blood Frenzy and Savage Harbor and 1988's Iced. She was married four times. When Loring was 15, she married her childhood sweetheart, Farrell Foomberg. The couple had one daughter before divorcing a year later in 1971. Loring married her second husband, Doug Stevenson, in 1981. Husband number two was an actor and contract performer best known for his role on the CBS soap opera Search for Tomorrow. Loring gave birth to a second daughter while married to Stevenson, but their marriage once again fizzled out shortly after she gave birth. After the divorce was finalized in 1983, Loring began dating adult film actor Jerry Butler. The two met on the set of the 1987 adult film Tracy's Big Trick. At the time, Loring was working as a makeup artist and uncredited writer in the adult film industry after failing to find work in Hollywood. Loring and Butler got married shortly after a meeting, but in the ensuing years, she grew increasingly dissatisfied and resentful over her husband's continued involvement in adult films. Eventually, this led Butler to secretly participate in film shoots without her knowledge. In a candid interview that he gave to Dateline NBC in the 90s, Butler described himself as addicted to the lifestyle of the adult film industry, although he did express shame over his clandestine behavior and how it negatively affected his marriage. The couple later made an appearance on the Sally Jesse Raphael show, once again discussing the damage that Butler's career was causing to their marriage. Eventually, Loring filed for divorce in 1992. That same year, however, Butler made his exit from the adult film world and virtually disappeared from the spotlight. In 2003, Loring married her fourth and final husband, Graham Rich. They remained together for five years before separating in 2008. In 2014, the divorce was finalized and Loring remained single for the remainder of her life. John Astin is the last surviving Adams Family cast member. In the original Adams Family sitcom, veteran actor John Astin played Gomez Adams, the family patriarch. Unlike Loring, Astin went on to have a long and prolific acting career after the Adams Family went off the air. He wound up reprising his role as Gomez in the 1977 TV film Halloween with the new Adams Family and did so once again in the Hanna-Barbera animated series The Adams Family, which aired from 1992 to 93. Aston also starred in the 1972 film Evil Roy Slade. He also had notable roles in films like West Side Story, That Touch of Mink, Move Over Darling, National Lampoon's European Vacation, and Teen Wolf 2. Behind the camera, Aston made his directorial debut with the 1958 short Prelude. That work went on to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Live Action Short Film. Later in his career, Aston did quite a bit of voiceover work, contributing to animated series like Recess, The Wild Thornberries, As Told by Ginger, and most recently, Justice League Action. At age 92, Aston is pretty much retired from acting, although he's never officially said so. He currently lives with his third wife, Valerie Sandoval, in Baltimore. 
Carolyn Sue Jones Jones was arguably best known for her role as Morticia Adams on The Adams Family. She began her career in the early 50s, and by the end of the decade, she had achieved recognition for her work with a nomination for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her performance in Bachelor Party. Two years later, in 1959, she was nominated for a Golden Globe and was considered to be one of the most promising actresses of her time. The Adams Family became the peak of her acting career, though, and she only ended up making sporadic on-screen appearances, primarily in guest-starring roles, in the years that followed. Most notably, she portrayed Mrs. Moore, the wife of a plantation owner, in the hit miniseries Roots. Jones died of colon cancer in 1983 at age 53. Jackie Coogan Born October 26, 1914, Coogan began his career as a child actor appearing in silent films. After appearing in Charlie Chaplin's classic The Kid, he became one of the first child stars in the history of Tinseltown. Famously, Coogan ended up successfully suing his mother and stepfather for allegedly squandering his film earnings. This litigation led to the enactment of the California Child Actors Bill, better known as the Coogan Act. He continued to act throughout his life and experienced a second wind of sorts when he portrayed Uncle Fester in The Adams Family. After suffering from kidney and heart ailments, Coogan passed away from heart failure March 1, 1984, at the age of 69. Ted Cassidy Noted for his tall stature, unusual facial features, and booming voice, which were caused by a condition called acromegaly, Cassidy was often cast in offbeat roles in shows like Star Trek and I Dream of Genie. Most famously, he portrayed Lurch on The Addams Family. Cassidy was also famous for narrating the Incredible Hulk series and even voiced the title character for the show's first two seasons. In 1965, Cassidy released a 7-inch record on Capitol Records, which featured two songs, The Lurch and Wesley. The former went along with a dance number that he performed in a 1965 episode of the L.A.-based music variety show Shivery. Later on in his career, he appeared in films like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and Going Coconuts. In 1973, he co-wrote the screenplay for the film The Harrod Experiment. Cassidy died from complications of his acromegaly on January 16, 1979, at age 46. Blossom Rock Born August 25, 1895, Rock got her start on the vaudeville stage before branching out to film and TV. Sometimes billed as Marie Blake, she appeared in notable early Hollywood films like My Dear Miss Aldrich and Love Finds Andy Hardy, before being featured in nine of the Dr. Kildare films put out by MGM from 1938 to 42. Her most significant role was Grandmama Adams in The Adams Family. Sadly, shortly after production of season two wrapped, she suffered a stroke. This effectively put an end to her acting career. A little over 11 years later, on January 14th, she died at 82 in Los Angeles. Ken Weathermax Ken Weathermax was born in Los Angeles in 1955. Before playing Pugsley Adams on The Adams Family, he played Porky in the first seasons of Lassie under the name Donald Keeler. After the Adams Family's cancellation, he entered the U.S. Army at age 17. When he was 21, he reprised his role as Pugsley in the 1977 TV film Halloween with the New Adams Family. While he didn't do much acting after that, he did establish a behind-the-scenes career working as a movie studio grip and set builder. He remained friends with Lisa Loring until his death on December 7, 2014. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Lisa Loring? What's your favorite episode of The Adams Family? Let us know in the comments section below.